You are watching History Unfiltered. China, one of the world's earliest civilizations and the origin of mankind's greatest advances. The Chinese began the 20th century as Europe's eastern doormat and grew to become a modern superpower. Today, the People's Republic of China is the world's most populous country and the second largest economy by GDP. These advances, however, were not without cost. To fuel these vast leaps in quality of life, many freedoms were sacrificed in the government's pursuit of China's overall development. The People's Republic of China has been cited with many human rights abuses over the years. To find out where this all began, let's go back to the beginning. 1949 marked the end of the Chinese Civil War and the founding of Mao Zedong's People's Republic of China. He began the new country with a complete reform of the land ownership system, the redistribution of land in favor of poor landless peasants. More powerful landlords and merchants were persecuted or executed. These land reforms as well as forced labor to run new steel production factories may have been responsible for over 70 million deaths in peacetime. Millions died of famine as farmers were taken off their land to work elsewhere. By 1961, the birth rate had fallen in half from malnutrition. The Cultural Revolution began in 1966 to further impose Mao's views on the country. Mao's Red Guards arrested many civilians, considered counter-revolutionaries, and prominent political parties and leaders seen as opposed to Mao's ideals were imprisoned or executed. Mao Zedong died in 1976 and Deng Xiaoping took the mantle as China's leader. He rapidly changed many of Mao's policies and greatly improved the standard of living for the Chinese populace. His critics, however, lambasted the party's authoritarian leadership and unrelenting stance on political reform. In 1989, the death of Hu Yaobang, a popular liberal figure and critic of the Communist Party, died, leading to famous demonstrations in Tiananmen Square. Student-led protests called for vast governmental reform including democracy, greater accountability, freedom of the press, and freedom of speech. At its height, about a million people assembled in the heart of Beijing in support of political reform. The authorities bounced between conciliatory and hardline tactics until May 20th, 1989. On that day, party authorities declared martial law and mobilized 300,000 troops to Beijing to quell the protests. By June 4th, at least several hundred demonstrators were dead. This famous incident sparked many famous pictures that are now icons of Chinese human rights, including Tank Man, a still yet unknown protester that stood unwavering in front of a line of Type 59 tanks with grocery bags in hand, a symbol of resistance that has become one of the most iconic images of the 20th century. Today, China's civil rights are still less than glamorous. The government often uses protection of state secrets as a reason to imprison those who are critical of the government. During the 2008 Beijing Summer Olympics, the government designated protest parks for those who wished to protest against the government. Many of those who requested the protest were denied their permit or detained by police. Mainland media coverage of China is controlled by the government's public relations department. Journalists have been arrested for covering topics that go against the Chinese government. For example, ITV news reporter John Ray was arrested while covering a free Tibet protest. Religion is also highly regulated the Catholic Church viewed as a foreign power and Tibetan Buddhism targeted by the government. Their leader, the Dalai Lama, denounced as a spiritual leader of the Tibetans. Fa Rong Guo, a spiritual practice, is banned by the government with reports of practitioners imprisoned or tortured to recant their belief in Falun Gong. Worse yet are the reports of organ harvesting from those in prison to supplement the organ donation system, with an estimated 65,000 prisoners killed for their organs from 2000 to 2008. In addition, China administers more official death penalties than any other nations combined. The large majority of these are serious and violent offenses, but China retains a number of non-violent death penalty offenses such as drug trafficking. Another major topic that advocates say is indicative of China's poor human rights is the Chinese birth control policy, more commonly known as the one-child policy. Having more than one child was illegal and punishable by fines. Critics argue that it contributes to forced abortions, infanticide, and sex-selective abortions that have led to China's gender imbalance, with 108 males for every 100 females, due to a perception of the man as the breadwinner of the house. China has been improving over the years. The number of laws that can apply the death sentence has decreased from 68 to 55. The Supreme People's Court ordered lower courts to suspend death sentences for two years. 
China's one-child policy has begun to be phased out, beginning in 2015. However, the government's control over modern communication, such as the internet and social media, has grown over the years. While in China, you cannot find results for Tiananmen Square on Google, nor will the search engine be accessible during the anniversary of the event. The country's Golden Shield monitors online chat and mail, with location data on all previous communication at both work and home. Such tactics make organized political opposition difficult, as modern instant communication is blocked or insecure. Due to this, it is likely that the future of Chinese human rights is up to the Chinese government to decide. And given their track record, that may be an issue.